we're delighted to have you join us for studs. You know, a couple of years ago, Mark DiCarlo was a guest on my show, Sale of the Century, and uh, he's very modest, so he wouldn't tell you this, but he was the biggest money winner we've ever had. Jim, and, Jim when, when I said that there was ever anything I could do for you, I didn't really mean to come on, on the show and stuff. Yeah, but I was... But it, it's, it's great to see you. I, but I, and, and, it, uh, and we can, like, go out after the show and have some coffee or something? I, uh, Jim Perry, ladies and gentlemen! Give him a call. We've got a fabulous show. Three women who went out with two guys. They were all blind dates. So let's go and see what happens, shall we? Oh, oh, boy. Are you glad you're here? Hi. I'm glad I'm here, too. Uh, let me introduce you to the audience. Audience? What? This is Tressa Mateo. She's a 21-year-old pre-law student. Give her a big hand. <laughs> and uh, next to her, audience? What? I said, audience. What? This is Cindy Hobink, a 22-year-old liberal studies student, and she's going to be on the show today, too. And uh, way down at the end, you know who that is? No, it's Kimberly Wetham, a 20-year-old liberal arts student. Kimberly, you've seen Sale of the Century, haven't you? Great show. I was on 11 days, and won by pure luck. It was scary. Well, yeah. Uh, have you ever dated the perfect guy for you, Kimberlina? Nope, not yet. Do you know what you're looking for, or are you just kind of searching around the dark? What are you looking for? Tall, dark, handsome, funny, likes kids, tanner than me. I don't like ugly guys. You don't like ugly guys. That's really going out on a limb. I know. Because so many of the women we have here just are begging for ugly guys to be set up with. Cindy? Hi. How about you? Do you have an ideal kind of guy you're looking for? Well, mine is tall. He's preferably blonde, brown hair. Um, he likes to work out, and he has to have a sense of humor. Sense of humor. Okay. Tressa, how about you? Um, guy doesn't have to have a really good time. He has to but let me do my own thing, you know? What like, does that I, mean? Well, I have my own life, and... Other guys, you mean? <laughs> well, maybe, if it comes to this. Um, but... He has to work out. He has a nice body. That's the mess. Okay, well, let's see uh, how the mods and the guys uh, stack up tonight. Let's meet our two stud du jour, Lawrence and... All right. Good to see you. Good to have you here. Yeah, how the heck are you? Have seats, guys. <laughs> Ooh, boy. Welcome to the show, guys. Let me introduce you to the audience here. This is Laurent Liniers, a 20-year-old student. Give him a big hand. Next to Lorenz is Phil Fazan, a 22-year-old data processor. Welcome to the show, Phil. Okay, guys, now you know the deal, right? Yeah. You've been on blind dates with these ladies. You should know something about them. If you do, you have a lot of hearts. If you have a lot of hearts, you're King Stud. And then, Fazan, you get to go on a date and we pay for it. Okay? Uh, We're going to start now. Laurent, Laurent, how do you pronounce your name? Laurent. Are you from France? Yes. No, I'm from the Caribbean, actually. French West Indies. French? Uh, not to be confused with the U.S. Virgin Islands. No. <laughs> I'm from the French West Indies. Oui! How do you think American women react to your accent? Do, you like, do they like that? They like it and they think it's funny. Funny? <laughs> oh, yeah. How is it funny? Well, a couple of things I say, you know, I got a couple of words back at, backwards, you know? Uh-huh. So yeah. what? At least you're trying. Oh, yeah. Uh, we asked the ladies what they thought of your voice and your vocal charm, Luan, and here's what they said. One of the ladies said, it's the god of l'amour. <laughs> He said, all you had to do was say my name, and I'm melted. <laughs> and the third lady said, I've got a date with Inspector Clouseau. <laughs> it's the god of l'amour. Um, Kimberlina? Oh, Kimberlina. What did you say then? I've got a date with Inspector Clouseau. Really? <laughs> did he, like, trip into your house and uh, set no. your cat on fire? No. Why? Just because he sounds well? His accent, for sure, yeah. Mm hmm Anything else about him? I'll tell you exactly. This is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> he said, slap your face on the table. <laughs> <laughs> what did he mean? Ask him. Tell him to say it. Listen. Well, we're in line to get the Twickets in Magic Mountain, you know? Oh, the Twickets? Yeah, to get Twickets. And, uh, <laughs> and there was a long line. You know, there were a lot of windows, and there's only one window open. And uh, she's getting mad, you know? 
So I meant to say, why don't you slap? No, why don't you slam your fist on the table? But I said it fast, you know, with my accent, it sounded, why don't you slam your face on the table? Okay. Who, who thought he was the god of l'amour? I did. Oh. Why, Cindy? Well, when we talked on the phone, he has an accent like everybody can hear. But um, I thought he was going to be one of those French lovers. I was kind of nervous, scared, afraid to go out with him. <laughs> but, um, but he turned out okay. Okay. Hey, Phil. D didn't mean to wake you up there. Sorry, Phil. <laughs> Phil, uh, you think uh, most women are impressed when they first see you? Uh, it depends on girls' taste. Oh. Like, we asked, these, we asked these three girls about their taste, and uh, one of the ladies said, Oh, my God, it's Lorenzo Lamas. <laughs> Another lady said, this... <laughs> Another lady said, This guy's got a rocket in his pocket. <laughs> the third lady said, I have hair on my legs longer than the hair on his head. <laughs> so you tell me who said what, Phil, and I'll give you this heart. Um... I have more hair on my legs than he has on his head. It would have to be Kimberlina. Huzzah! <laughs> uh, you don't like guys with short hair, Kimberlina? Um, not particularly. How at come? least, at least longer than the hair on my legs. All right, <laughs> <laughs> you're up. You got him beat. All right. Uh, oh my God, it's Lorenzo Lamas or oh uh, my God, a rocket in Baga. Oh my God, it's Lorenzo Lamas would have. Yeah. There you go, two in a row. He kind of looks like a buffed up Lorenzo, doesn't he? Yeah, like an overstuffed Lorenzo Lomas. But uh, he's better looking at Lorenzo Lomas. All right, stick around. We come back. We're going to find out more about our stud and our studette. Uh, right when we return. Uh, women from other parts of the world, would you say? Oh, yeah. But uh, where I come from, they didn't shave. Yeah? yeah? Because most of them, they live on the beach, you know, topless with thongs all the time. Sounds like pretty good shape to me. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> we asked the ladies what they thought of your looks, Laurent, and here's what they said. One of them said, oh, me back, it's Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> <laughs> Second lady said, he's the perfect puffed-up Ken doll. <laughs> if he's bigger, he'll pop, said the third lady. <laughs> So you tell me who said what, we'll give you this hard, Laurent. Hold me back. It's Jean-Claude Van Damme. Um, it's good. Cindy? No. Oh. What'd you say, Cindy? I said he is a perfect Ken doll. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, but Ken's got the oh, hair. No, but he's the beach version. All right. But uh, what'd you guys do on your date? We went, we were supposed to go out to one place and it rained. And we were going to go to another place and it still rained. So we ended up just going out to lunch and talking and up dinner and... Lunch and dinner, both? And a movie in between. Wow. The apartment. Who actually said, hold me back, it's Jean-Claude Van Damme, oh, Teresa? Baby. Why, did he, like, threaten you or something? Or? <laughs> no, but, I mean, well, look at him. He looks, he's, like, all into shape, and I could just picture him, like, doing something like that. Really? Yeah. Uh, I bet. All right, well, uh, <laughs> Phil? What do you think is your most memorable quality? I would say my lips. Your lips. Girls like my lips. Why? <laughs> I don't know, because they're big, I guess. Big so, lips. Something to hold on to. <laughs> well, we asked these ladies uh, what they remembered most about you, Phil, and uh, one of them remembered that his gyrating hula butt was a sight to behold. <laughs> Grab some cotton. This guy's talking my ear off, said the second lady. And the third lady said, his ball was so slippery it must have been coated with Vaseline. <laughs> oh, Phil. Uh, his, his ball is so slippery, uh, it had to be coated with Vaseline. That would have to be, uh, Cindy. Yep. <laughs> there you go, Phil. Yeah, innocent, totally innocent. We went miniature golfing. And you know how when you start off, you have to pick a little hole, right? Well, he couldn't get the right hole. And, and it kept slipping off. <laughs> who, who, uh... All right, gyrating hula butt was a sight to behold, or uh, grab some cotton, this guy's talking my ear off. I'd have to say, his gyrating hula butt was a sight to behold, that would definitely be Tressa. Yes. Oh, there you go. Well, we, we went to nightclub and we went dancing, and he's a really good dancer. And I couldn't help but notice his gyrating hula butt. What's the difference between a gyrating butt and a gyrating hula butt? 
the way it kind of moves side to side. You know, like Did he actually have the hoop on? <laughs> the hoop on? No, he forgot it at home. Really? Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Laurel. You get to uh, you like to get romantic with a woman on a first date, or are you a slower mover? I'm a slower mover. You know, I like I like to feel a lot more comfortable before I start pulling the moves. You know. Uh huh. Definitely. Pulling the moves. So you, you usually make the first move when the move, move is made. Eh? Oh yes, sure. Okay. All right. We asked the ladies uh, if they were being romantic and what they were thinking about during the moments of romance on your dates, and uh, one of the ladies said, "Chivalry is not dead." He said, baby soft, cheeks off, flushed with excitement. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> and the third lady said, I wanted to pin him to the wall and see how he measured up. Yeah! <laughs> okay, Chivalry is not dead. Um, Kimberlina. No! Stuff we did. What did you say, Kimberlina? Um, baby soft, cheeks off, flushed with excitement. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> so, how, yeah? How's your, how'd your date end up with him? Um, oh, at my house. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he kept blushing because he was nervous, maybe. Why were you nervous? I wasn't really nervous. I was just sunburned. Sunburned. <laughs> <laughs> how, long, uh, how long were you at her house? I was in the house for about, let's see, two and a half, three hours. <laughs> nice house? Really, really big, huge house that takes a long time to look through? Is that no, like... really cozy place. Really? You know? Really nice. I like it. What'd you do? Well, we talked. And we also talked to their parents. I mean, their mom, <laughs> their mother. Uh-huh. And um, I met a couple of her friends. Mm-hmm. Had a good time, you know? Really good time. Who said chivalry is not dead? I did. Cindy, why? Because he was the perfect gentleman the whole date through. He came in, met my parents. Talked to them, and then at the end of the date, just gave me a hug, kiss on the cheek, and he had to make sure he said goodbye to my parents. And Wake up! I'm leaving! <laughs> goodbye! <laughs> nice pajamas, Mr. Cindy! <laughs> <laughs> Phil, how about you? Any romance on your dates? Oh, um, there's a little bit here yeah. and there. <laughs> we asked the ladies if there was, and uh, one of them said, he showed me what it means to be a woman. <laughs> The second lady said, it was all I could do to keep from screaming out loud. <laughs> Third lady said, my mouth opened wide and his tongue took over. Um, <laughs> his mouth opened wide and his tongue took over, that would definitely have to be, um, Cindy. Cindy? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Phil. What did what, you say, Cindy? I said he showed me what it meant to be a woman. Well, then why would he think you said my mouth opened wide and his tongue took over? That's nothing. Anyways, I will tell you what I meant, though. Oh, please do. <laughs> I just meant that the whole date, we had a lot of chemistry. He's a very good kisser. Um, he was sensitive, and just at one point of the day, he just gave me a squeeze and a kiss on the head, and he was just a doll. Oh. Why, why, why did you think that was her, Phil? <laughs> well, you, see, um, you said definitely Cindy. Well, um, <laughs> well it, it's not what it sounds like. I'm sure, I'm sure no. it isn't, Phil. Because, um, you know, we exchanged a kiss here and there, and she's a good kisser, and figured, hey, Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for uh, shedding some light on that, Phil. Appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> who actually did say, my mouth opened wide and his tongue took over? Who was that? Was Teresa. <laughs> Did he make you feel like a woman? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah? How did he do that? Um, things got a little bit intense, but not, I mean, not really bad. I mean, I don't think anything happened, but... <laughs> He's a good kisser. I'm going to leave it at that. Where was that? Well, now, now how did how'd your date end up? You were back at his house, your place? My house. Your house. Okay. Meet your parents? No. Okay. Okay. So, you're, how long were you at your house? I don't know. <laughs> Um, I was a little bad. <laughs> That's what it means to be a woman. Sit around, we come back. We'll find out who's more likely to write his own sex manual. So don't go away.
All right, guys, before the show, we talked to the ladies. They gave us some descriptions of you guys. And all you got to do now is tell us who they're talking about, okay? You or your, your fellow stud, okay? Fair enough, Laurent? Fair enough. Okay, we're going to start with you. According to the ladies now, who's more likely to babysit his sister's kids, you or Phil? Definitely me. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're very sure about it. Laurent says it's him. Sure. Ladies? Lauren. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Why would you say that, Cindy? Well, because when we went out on our date, he talked a lot about his little brother, who's 11, who's supposedly just like him. And he just, he loved his little brother, so he's great. Okay, have you ever babysat for him? I never babysat before, but... But you would? I would. Okay, that's good. Phil, who's more likely to have a tattoo on his butt, you or Laurent? <laughs> It's not me, but I know they're going to say me, so. You do? Yeah. Okay. Phil says it's not him, but you're going to say it's him. Do you say it's him? Phil. Of course they do, Phil. Why would you say that, Kimberlina? Because I could picture him getting buzzed with his Navy friends and trying to impress him on with his studliness and get a tattoo on his butt. Who's more likely to take a friend along on a date, you or Phil? I'd say Phil. Okay, Phil? All right. Laurent says Phil. Ladies? Phil. Hey, there you go. Why would you say that, Tessa? Because all of his friends were there. No. <laughs> At your house? No. Oh. <laughs> we went out dancing, and, and I guess he, like, goes to the club a lot, and a lot of his friends were already there, and it was, like, every two feet I was meeting another one of his friends. Uh -huh. Phil, who's most likely to get hooked on soap operas, you or Laurent? I would have to be... Laurent. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Phil says it's Laurent. Ladies? Laurent. Oh, there you go, Phil. You don't miss a trick. Why would you say that, Cindy? Because, um, just knowing Laurent, he wants to be an actor, and he stays home a lot, and I can just picture him watching soaps and just wanting to be on it. And Would he play the doctor or the gigolo, do you think? The gigolo doctor? <laughs> <laughs> The gynecologist. <laughs> Laurent, who's more likely to sing a woman a lullaby, you or Phil? That'll be me. Yeah? Definitely. All right, well, he says it's him, ladies. Laurent. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Did he sing to you, Kimberlina? No, he didn't. No? Oh. He likes kids, and so he probably sings to them, and he would sing to his girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> That's really why you said that? Because he thinks he can sing. <laughs> Phil, who's, who's most likely to write his own sex manual, Phil? You or Laurent? They're going to say me. I'm going to say you. You're going to say you? They're going to say me. Phil says it's Phil, ladies. Phil. Oh, there you go, Phil. <laughs> Why would you say that, Tressa? Phil's not too shy, and I can just picture him. Telling someone what he, what he wants, basically. Really? And he had his hand on his heart the entire time. That's a date. Excuse me? <laughs> he had his hand on his crotch the entire time during the day. You have three hearts. How many you got, Phil? Um, seven. Seven. That's pretty good. Anybody can win, though. It's double or nothing now, so you're still in the running. Laurent, all you got to do is tell me who you'd like to continue your romance with. If she feels the same way about you, it's an instant bargain, and we send you on a date that we pay for. Okay. So you, because you're trailing, you get to start. All right. So, um, okay, with Tracy, I had a good time. I had a great time with her. Um, I just didn't feel the sparks. Cindy, I had a good time, too, but the sparse weren't there either, and I choose Kimberlina. How come? Well, she's the more... The were there? Oh, well, yeah, they were there, I, obviously. I had a great time with her. I made a laugh, obviously. Um, I spent a long time with her. Um, we had a lot of things in common. All right, now if she picks you, where are you guys going to go on your date? I'd like to go to Mexico since I haven't been there. Okay. I've never been there. Never. Okay. All right. Sounds pretty exciting. All right, Phil, you're in the lead. 
Same deal with you. Well, um, Kimberlina. <laughs> All I can say is no. <laughs> she's a nice girl. Kimberlina's. She's a really, she's a nice girl, as you know, but me and her just, we did not click at all. I sense that, Phil. Pretty much. Uh, and this one was the hardest decision ever. Um, I was thinking about it, and then Cindy, a really sweet girl. I had a really good time with you. We talked. We hung out. But my heart's kind of set on Tressa. Tressa? All right. Why? Why? Because <laughs> she's, um, we went out. Because I like to go out and party and, you know, go dance and stuff. And she has a lot of friends. I have a lot of friends. And we, we could get, like, you know, go out and party together and hang out and have a good time. So okay. Really... Right. If she feels the same way, where are you guys going to go? I want to keep real estate, go to Catalina Island, hang around, cruise on little golf carts, and get a little bungalow and, you know, kind of hang out. All right. <laughs> so I'm very excited. Very excited indeed. All right, now, now, Cindy, neither of the guys picked you, but uh, did you have fun on the show? Yeah, I had a great time, and your crew is awesome. Aren't they the best? Yes. All right, would, would you... Uh, give it to again. Uh, Phil! Okay, oh. Phil, all right. Uh, now, uh, Laurent, you're trailing, right? And you picked Kimberlina. Kimberlina, if you pick Laurent, you could be off to Mexico, which is a pretty romantic destination, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Laurent! down to you, Tressa, and here's the deal. If you, pick, if you pick Phil, you're going to go to Catalina and drive a golf cart and perhaps get a bungalow. If not, these two are going to Mexico. What's it going to be? Phil, there it is! Tomorrow at 9, Alfred Woodward, a Mario Van Peebles star in the drama, Blue Bayou. Stay tuned now for the Dennis Miller Show. That's up next on CKCO-TV.